Welcome. My name is Kay Aubrey Shemaine. I am the owner and director of Grand Adventures Ranch, a holistic equine wellness education center in Sonoida, Arizona. I specialize in teaching photopuncture, also known as acupuncture with light, to help equine lovers bring horses to optimal health and performance. Each week we invite those who are interested in learning more about photopuncture, light therapy, and equine energy points to join us in, any, in, in discussing any aspect of these modalities. This call is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any person or animal. The opinions given are my own and are not intended to replace the advice of your veterinarian. I am not a veterinarian. I am a bio-nutritional consultant with over 20 years of experience in helping animals through nutrition, detoxification, and energetic balance. So this week our topic is uh, the beginning of a case study of helping a stallion with compromised kidneys. And um, this was called into me by Cheryl Perkins. She's an in light uh, dealer or distributor in Canada. And um, so she's going to correct me as I go along if I have some of the information uh, incorrect. But um, this is kind of going to be an overview of how we can help as uh, adjuvant therapists, not the veterinarian, but just to help the horse on the outside with supporting kidney function and underlying core energy. Okay. So Cheryl, correct me if wrong, but you, you mentioned that one of the points that came up very strongly was right behind the last rib. Is this the point that we had come up for you? Okay, it, don't, don't, yeah, oh, so, so down in here, okay, so hold on a second, let me get, let me get a, a pen here, a marker. Oh, no wonder I couldn't figure out. GoToMeeting has changed itself again. And <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Okay, so um, let's see. So Cheryl, you're talking, oh, sorry, I, I accidentally skipped slides. You're talking about more in here? Let's see if I can get this here. More, more along, along here underneath the ribs. Bear in mind, I'm looking at where the bone yeah, is. Exactly. Okay, so this section of the horse from below the hip in this, in front of the leg and behind the ribs here is what we call the toxic triangle, okay? And this point okay. right behind, just, just above the curve of the last rib is gallbladder 25. That is an alarm point for kidney. When that is hot, think kidney and, and toxification. And then when we come in just inside this first, um, this first uh, intercostal space or last one, that was, so this is gallbladder then liver, then we skip one, then we have gallbladder then liver. So if you were down here before, this would have been liver 13. If you have noise in the background, please mute yourself. If you're doing dishes or banging, thank you. Okay, so anytime we see any of these points along in here come up hot, think toxicity or, or poor function of the uh, organs of elimination, primarily the liver and kidney, but it can also be um, the, the lungs and even, you know, by this time the limb system shunting things off to the skin. All right. So that was just, a, a, you had mentioned a point, so I just wanted to check and see where we were at on that one. Okay, so the kidney meridian, we're going to be looking at the, the pair of meridians that are that function that handle the water in the body, okay, or and are also called the water meridian. They're the water sisters, kidney and bladder. Okay. If kidney is not functioning well, then, then it's and its and its energy is low, then bladder is most likely high. And so we have to balance the energy between the two. Kidney and I'm talking the meridian here, not the organ. It has a lot of responsibilities, but primarily it's filtering or out liquid waste, of course, from the organ's perspective, but also balancing 
the uh, pH of the body, and very, very importantly, balancing the, the, the core uh, chi. We have different kinds of energy in the body. We have food energy every time we eat and we, we, we take in nourishment, we replenish food energy. Every time we take a breath, we, we replenish air energy, okay? But we are only born with so much grandmother energy, energy that came from our ancestors, okay? So ancestral chi has to be taken care of as we uh, through our life. And when we use up kidney energy, we die. That's one of, you know, it ties in with, you lose your kidneys, you either die, you get a new kidney, or you're on dialysis the rest of your life. There is no just restoring it by eating something new. And so balancing kidney energy is really important. And the kidney energy flows from between the heel bulbs in the last, in the last leg, up the back of the leg. It kind of spins around the hawk here, goes up, and we say a miracle occurs, but essentially it comes very deep in the body and then it runs up the mid, along um, just to either side of the midline and it comes out at the K27s, and I'll show a front picture of that as well. But so this is, this is energy traveling from the back leg up to the chest, all right? Now, when we talk about balancing an entire meridian, if you're doing, uh, when, we're, when we're working on horses and we know we have something extremely compromised, I like to go in and like every other session, open and balance, energize the entire meridian. And to do that with kidney, I would probably put one of my um, cluster heads here on K1. I'd come up here to either K3 or 4 or right here at the back of the hawk. And then I'd move, keep one cluster head at, at the hawk and move the other one to just outside the umbilical cord. And then, then when that round was through, I'd have one hand at the umbilical cord, and if I can reach, one hand up on, on the chest for K27s. And that lets me help open the energy all the way along that meridian. Does that make sense? Okay. So the, on the front of the horse, the K27s are on either side of the breastbone. So they're those divots. If you ran your fingers down, your thumb and forefinger along the juggler groove and then down onto the chest, it would fall into two divots just inside the shoulder blades. That's the K27s. And one of the things you can do is, you know, even though you may not be there, you can have the caregiver for the horse massaging those a couple of times a day to help bring up just the core life energy for that horse and give them enough, enough energy to you know, keep going and, and, and keep healing, all right? So that could be part of your overall balancing, but that it could be something you have that, you know, sometimes it's good just to give them something they can do so they feel like they're helping. And this is one of those points. This is the number one point, first point my classes get taught. They learn to work it on themselves to, oh, no. I hope my monitor's not going out, guys. Can you see that again now? Did it come back in? Yeah. Sure. All right. If it goes down, we'll have to switch to the other monitor. I'm sorry. Okay, so the bladder meridian, I didn't get the line written on this one, but the sister to kidney goes the other direction. It goes from the corner of the eye, up over the ear, along the top of the neck, along the ribs, up over the butt and down that cubital crease and then down the outside of the back leg. And opening and balancing the, the bladder meridian and the kidney meridian, just doing that activates every other meridian on the body because of the association points here that are associated with all the other meridians and organs. So if you just take, and you don't even have to get it on exactly the right spot, you just take your um, cluster heads and, and just do one at bladder one, one at bladder 10, and then move. Bring your left hand to bladder 10 and your right hand to bladder 11. And then just keep going and opening this whole area. Do that in conjunction with the, oh, do the same thing for kidney, and that's a full session, okay? A lot of the 
points both on the one and on the other one did come up, and more so on one side of the horse than the other. But all on the same side that the points. K27. Uh huh. It was on the right side and the right side. The right side and thing. Yeah, the right side. If you're looking behind the horse, that was the one where all the points, you know, on the end of the, the end of the rib cage and those and that and those areas and also in the hock area on that horse. When you see. So and, oh, and also on the head. Right. It's interesting. When you see all these bladder points compromised. Think toxicity, okay? Think toxic, especially when you see it down this line of the butt where it comes down the cubital crease. When all of these are hot, mm -hmm. think toxicity, okay? okay? And, you know, detox, detox, detox. It's the, when people ask me, what do, we, what do we do? The first thing you always do is detox. And this is where I start with detox. I help the body to start flushing by energizing the bladder meridian. And I just do like level two and five for 30 seconds each. But if that really agitates the horse, if, if you know, the sicker you are, the slower you have to go, maybe you start, you do yeah. four and six, okay? And you just gentle it down just a little bit, okay? Okay. So, and then the other thing we can do are some very specific things to balance the energy between the two sisters. Remember I said that if kidney was low, bladder is hot. One's cold, one's hot, yin yang. So what we do is there's three sets of balancing points. And I'll, and, um, I'll record this, you can watch it. Um, but the first set are the association points. What that means is these points are associated with the energy of those meridians. So bladder is kidney 23. You come back here behind the last rib and they go two, more spinal processes okay so that's that's and if you just get your lights in that area you're going to be close enough so that's kidney and while you have one cluster head on kidney do the other on bladder which is come up over the hip and you're going to fall into this big divot here those are your association points Then we have the connecting points, and these points literally connect the energy between the sisters. So one is kidney four, it's just on the inside of that, uh, the bone on, on, on the hock, and the other is bladder 58, and it's halfway. So it's bladder 58 is on the back of the bone, of the, of the large bone here, and it's halfway down. So you just kind of bisect that bone and put your lights halfway up. So if you'll do one light here and one light, I usually do one leg at a time. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. One leg at a time. So I'd have one on the inside, one on the outside, and one on the inside here at the hock. That will help balance the energy, bring down bladder, and bring kidney up. Does that make sense? Now, this is a different... Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? I said he drinks and he, he still, but he urinates a lot. I was, I was expecting for him not to be able to go to the bathroom. No, because be, the kid, when the kidneys are not working well, they are not able to condense um, and do their job properly. The body makes up for it by drinking and flushing more. So it's more dilute urine and the kidneys are not able to, to do their job with less water. And then the last balancing, okay. balancing number three is to come down to the ting points. So kidney one, remember, was right between the heel bulbs. And bladder 67, mm -hmm. the ending of the bladder is in what we call the pinky point, okay, or this back third on, on the, uh, the cornet band. And there are a lot of acupuncturists that do nothing besides treat ting points and association points, or ting points and connecting points. And it, it's very effective, okay? Now, more is not more. Don't try to do everything I just showed you all in one session. Okay, I would, oh, really? okay. the body, 
a master acupuncturist never treats more than tries to never treat more than 10 points in a session okay so I would do you know maybe on day one open the meridians and treat the points that you found when you scanned then on day three do the do the balancing the three sets of balancing then on day five go back and do scan and treat and opening meridians and then go back to balancing does that make sense and these are just guesstimates on points maybe you have to do you know one maybe you're doing it four or five days apart or once a week what whatever it is you can get you know the client can afford and you have time for and whatever but i would do one and then the other the master acupuncturist looks for the one point and never treats more than 10. now that is not the same as when we're treating an area for damage this is not the same as putting a light therapy wrap on I'm talking when we're doing point work this is why i don't like finding 100 points on a horse it, it's not that it's bad it's just it won't be as efficient and it won't tell you exactly it won't give you as much information about what's going on and then the other thing you can do is maybe so how, go ahead no, i was just gonna say so if you don't like to find that many points what are you doing just turning it way down so yep. it doesn't go off as much or? yep yep use the sensitivity turn the sensitivity uh, down exactly to where only the most important points show up. Think of it as a traffic okay. think of it as a traffic jam in the middle of the city. You have a traffic jam yeah. because of an accident. Do you have to draw you don't have to drag away all of those cars. You only have to drag away the cars where there was an accident and everything else will clear itself. Right. The meridians right Yeah, the meridians are energetic freeways. We're just trying to clear the yeah. accidents, okay? Now, what, what I would recommend doing is renting one of the pads, either, and for, and for over you, this can be a tendon saver, it can be a, uh, an ankle saver, or it can even be, this, in this case, a pull cap, just being used over the kidney and loin area. And that can be done once okay. or twice a day. Okay. Okay. Notice I'm holding it on, not with Velcro straps, but with a with a but with a uh, polar wrap and I highly recommend yeah. everybody who does this for a living have polar wraps in their kit they're just too useful now Sandra asked what happens when you turn it all the way down and you're still getting a ton of points when that happens the whole body is so inflamed that you're not really getting any information and that's when I start by just working the meridians that's where I will just energize and balance bladder kidney bladder kidney bladder kidney until we've lowered the inflammation and the toxicity enough that I can scan and get real information or maybe I open the bladder meridian and if I know I have let's say we know that the horse is really tight in, in, in the hindquarters then I'll treat the hindquarter master points but if but there that's one of the times when scanning when this horse is that toxic or that inflamed we're not getting valid information. So that's where knowing master points really comes in handy. Does that answer your question, Sandra? Oh, I forgot I've got Sandra. Hold on. Ah. You're no longer muted, Sandra. It took you out of the doghouse. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> you, are, you are absolutely right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No, you are you were absolutely right. That horse was ridiculously inflamed. They put it back on that one senior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just nothing you can do at that point. Yeah. Okay. So what else? There's a few other things we okay, can do. You. You're no no problem. There's a few other things we can do to support kidney function on these horses, and this all comes down to what is the owner willing to do? You know, they want a magic pill, and we're not a magic pill, but you know. The kidney cannot function, and probably if the kidney's that stressed, the liver's not doing a good job either, okay? It's trying to do the job of the kidney and the liver for eliminating um, uh, uh, toxins from the body. 
So we've got to lower the toxins going in, quit stressing things. So no, no feed or paste, paste or feed through wormers. Try not to have any chlorinated water. Really be fussy with the hay and preferably only grass hays, no, no alfalfa. Um, you know, absolutely zero vaccinations. It says on the bottle, do not vaccinate a sick animal. So compromised kidney, you can't get much sicker than that. So no vaccinations and really, really, really avoid sugar because that sugar and high starches, sugars and proteins put, put more stress on the pH balancing job of the, of the um, kidneys. And it's just, it, it's just too much, too much work for the kidneys when we do that. Do those make sense to you, Cheryl? Yeah, proteins, sugars, and was there one other thing? Starches and sugars, yeah. Cooked starches. If you've got a, well, that'll be the next slide. Um, so, okay, so quick start eating, uh, eating uh, um, like um, uh, processed feed and stuff, like pellets and stuff. I don't ever feed, uh, I, I feed no sweet, I'm sorry, what was that again? Pro what? Like any, any processed grain and oh, stuff like that. Well, yeah. You know, you get it in yeah. Or, I mean, that's what you mean by starches. Yes, exactly. If 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 you yeah. have to feed a grain, feed feed a whole grain, whole corn, whole or right. whole barley, and hopefully no grains on a horse with this kind of problem. I'd much rather use something like Cool Stance, which is shredded coconut, because they're going to get the they're going to get the fat, they're going to get the calories, they're going to get the minerals without the stress on the on the kidneys, and without the high protein. Um, I. I think all, all, well, well, go, what was that? Sorry, the shredded coconut, what, there's a brand or Yeah, it's wonderful. It's called Cool Stance, C-O-O-L-S-T-A-N-C-E. And, okay. and it's made by Stance Equine. And okay. if, you, if you go to their website, you can see where it is sold, but I do know they do sell it in great ports, portions of Canada. Okay. Okay. And a little goes a very long way, and it gets the coconut oil and so on in that's so supportive to the gut, etc. Now, okay. apple cider vinegar is a must, preferably raw. And uh -huh. um, if they're using a metal water tub then you have to put it in the food because it can't you can't put the vinegar in a metal water tub because it'll it'll um, erode it and react with the metal but um, you know even just a quarter cup a day uh, into the water or a tablespoon or so into the food will make a huge difference um, flushes the kidneys helps balance the pH very very supportive and no veterinarian should have an issue if they've got them on other drugs and so on Obviously, right. I like an alkaline diet. I prefer no alfalfa. And then there's herbs. Uva ursi is probably the best known for supporting the kidneys. Um, Boldo and Chanca Piedra are both uh, Amazonian herbs. You can get them from Herb Farm, P-H-A-R-M. You can get all of them from Herb Farm. And I'm sure there's other herb places as well. There's also kidney formulas and I'm sure there's people better than I you know that know have all sorts of great kidney formulas um, I don't know a lot of them these are the ones I work with but uh, definitely you know things to help support and rebuild kidney function and on how much to give it really comes down to it comes down to the I muscle test for every horse depending on which herb I've got and how fresh it is but in general I would give a horse about what I would give a human being because they may weigh five times more than we do but they get five times more out of the herbs because they've got a much more efficient digestive tract so usually about what I would give an adult human being I would give to them Does that make sense Sandra Can you just repeat what you just said because for some reason my sound went out for a ah. second when you just said it the dosage? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. That'll be an extra ten dollars. Um, <laughs> no, I, in general, I'm going to start with about as how much I would give an adult human being. 
Okay. Okay. Because they're going to be way more efficient than we are in utilizing the herbs and getting a lot more out of that cellulose. They can they can pull that medicinal, you know, the different the different factors out of the um, uh, the plant material much better than you and I can. But you can you can you can give it straight. You can brew it up in a tea. You can give it as a tincture. So how much to give depends on which form you're, you're getting and how fresh it is. I've been known to give uva. What? Go ahead, finish on that herb thing. I was gonna say, I've been known to give as much as a cup, cup and a half of uva, uva ursi a, a day to horses that have tied up and have a lot of blood, blood passing through their kidneys to help support flushing it out. So, uh, you know, it, it takes quite a bit before it could be, none of those are considered harmful even in large doses. Excuse me. It's not a dose, it's a serving size. <laughs> we're not vets, so we're not dosing, we're serving. But anyway, so any other questions on that from anybody tonight? Um, I'm just curious as to what grains you like to feed. There's, uh, there's any, any in particular, maybe with this horse, whole grains, obviously, but you mentioned barley. Used to feed barley way back, but then we were also told that, that was the highest grain you could feed. I, no, there's so much contradiction. Yeah, you never know what's what is it. Barley has pretty much the low, one of the lowest um, uh, energy um, levels of the ones that are out there that you can buy. I, I either feed dynamite complete, um, which is whole corn, oats, barley, and and. Uh, all non-GMO organic with a little bit of soy and non-GMO organic soy. But quite frankly, if I had a horse in kidney failure, I wouldn't give him any grain. Now the other okay. standard pointed out, you could probably look at Genesis Organics. That's Genesis is is um, if you have to give a grain, it's better than a lot of things that are out there. Okay, it's uh, peas, flax, oats, and barley. Pretty much okay, okay. Um, but if I can maintain the weight without giving grain I will I would prefer prefer to stay off or no more than maybe two cups of grain a day okay just a little enough okay. to get the meds in okay. maybe a couple right, so right now I just got word from her that he's happily outside bet that's a great sign that's a great sign yeah. um, but okay. he's this has been something that has been hit him hitting him for months you know like you said uh, the initial it seems to be last fall so I would expect to have you know I would probably want to see this horse two three times a week for the first month and then yeah. drop it down yeah. maybe once a week and then drop it down to twice a month and you know because all it takes is him getting into something really too poisonous for his kidneys to handle that maybe the other horses wouldn't even notice, but something moldy, you know, something something sprayed on the grass, you know, that kind of thing, and he could go downhill. Yeah. So it's it's really key to keep it up. Any other any other questions, people? So, all right. I guess this, um, so what would can you recommend then out of everything you talked about as far as feeding goes? What what potentially would be the best at getting weight back on? Because he is so 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 thin. 
cool stance. Okay. Yeah, you can you can feed. There are areas of the world, like in Australia and Southeast Asia, where horses eat nothing but copra, and copra is what's left over after they squeeze most, but not all, of the fat out of the coconut. It's non-GMO, there's no chemical preservatives, there's no toxins in it. I mean, it's it's a beautiful high fiber, high fat. I mean, it still has about 10% fat. So I shouldn't say high fat, but more fat than you would get in um, pellets, as it were, okay, in, in, in um, grass or Timothy Hay pellets. I would go to Timothy Hay instead of alfalfa if I needed more calories than grass would give me. And I, you know, I, I have my old horses that are hard keepers. They do really well on maybe three cups of the dynamite pelleted grain ration and uh, one, one and a half, you know, one heaping cup of, of cool stance and maybe a little bar, extra barley, but usually not even that. They do, they man, maintain their well, weight really well with that. So you don't want to put the weight back on too quickly because he can't process the fats well because his liver is going to be compromised. Oh, okay. 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 So, you know, just take it slowly, function, get that kidney function going back up and then, you know, put the weight on slowly. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's interesting because his coat is still really good. It's really nice and shiny and everything. He doesn't have a long coat, you know, for the, you know, typically when something is not doing well, they, they might have a longer coat. Too. He's got a really good coat. Just like thin, 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 and just right. really kind of lethargic, you know? Well, you know, I would rent, I seriously would rent her one of the, one of the equine wraps and, and encourage her to do that yeah. at least once a day over the kidneys. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, excellent. And if you do it with the if you do it with an ankle saver, she can also be going like one do one ankle one day and one the other, and that will treat the ting points for kidney and bladder as well. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, you could. She, if she had, she's made of money. She could buy two and get a set. But she doesn't really have to. She could just do one one day and one the other, or one at breakfast and one at dinner. It's not a big deal. Okay. 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 All right, guys. Any other last questions? I will, I will, I'll have this converted to video and I'll upload it to YouTube in, in, as quickly as I can. I'm also going to be uploading, oh, wow. okay. yeah. If you look at the, if you, once you get one of those emails, okay, if you click on the link, there's a full library of webinars in there. But I'll put this on the yeah. YouTube one, that's the fastest, okay? I'll send you the link. Okay. All right, guys. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're Thank more than you welcome. Can. Hopefully you guys, and we'll talk to you next week. Namaste. Have a nice day.